Your constitutional freedoms under assault every day of the week. Your freedoms being taken away rapidly. I'm Artifacts Mars and this is Tyranny Watch News. Together we will explore the issues and the assaults on your freedoms, our failing schools, the incoming hordes of illegal aliens, and we'll find ways that we can stop this and return America to its greatness. I'm Artifacts of Mars. This is Artifacts of Mars, and thank you for listening to Tyranny Watch News for 22 July 2014. Our lead story from CBS News is that Governor Rick Perry of Texas has deployed the National Guard to the border in Texas. This announcement comes as the uh, Obama administration is still struggling to deal with the influx of more than 50,000 unaccompanied minors, most from Central America and across the United States in the past year. Additional resources are not aimed at the children themselves, describing them instead, Perry said, describing them it says the force multiplier to help Texas Department of Public Safety combat brutal Mexican drug cartels that are preying on our communities. They will not stand by idly while our citizens are under assault and little children from Central America are detained in squalor. We're too good of a country. All right. Well, looking at that story, let's take a look at what Coyote and Chief Obama is doing in this world of foreign and border challenges. Obama is embarking on the one mission that has regularly proved to win it for him, raising money for his fellow Democrats. In other words, He's going to fundraisers while the world is on the edge of whatever. Obama on Tuesday was headed, was starting a three-day West Coast trip scheduled to attend at least five fundraisers in Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles less than four months ahead of midterm elections that could change Washington's balance of power. Really? Is there any real difference between Republicans and Democrats? Not much. Anyway, trip comes as Obama is dealing with a series of high profile tests of his presidency in Eastern Europe, the Middle East, the southern U.S. border, downing of a U- Malaysian airliner or Ukraine last week, the eruption of war in Gaza, and the humanitarian crisis caused by the influx of Central American miners seeking to cross borders put strain on the White House. And he can't uh, really prove that one by me looking at his reaction. He's off fundraisers saying, screw this. I don't want nothing to do with this. So he goes fundraisers while the world burns, basically. Alright. There's a billionaire named Jeremy Grantham who is warning that all this going to cause a stock market collapse that will be unlike any other ever seen. 
We have no right to be surprised by a severe and imminent stock market crash. Uh, explains Mark Spitznagel, a hedge fund manager who is notorious for his hugely profitable billion dollar bet on 2008 crisis. In fact, we must absolutely expect it. Billionaire dollar investor Warren Buffett is rumored to be preparing for a crash as well. The Warren Buffett indicator also knows total market cap to GDP ratio is breaching sell alert status and collapse may happen at any moment. This is from Newsmax. So these billionaires are saying we're in deep trouble. Collapse is coming. And most of these people, you know, they probably do a hundred million in the pot in stocks. So they know what they're talking about. Meanwhile, Obama is off fundraising. Do you uh, get the picture here? <laughs> All right. Let's see what else is in the news. Let's say that Ukraine's situation gets out of hand and we wind up in a nuclear war. There's a story out of Daily Mail UK. They just did a story on a multi-decade old global cooling and unprecedented ozone loss following a regional nuclear conflict. In other words, Russia and France and Britain duke it out with nukes. In it, the researchers looked at the outcome of limited new regional nuclear strike between India and Pakistan. Well, okay, India and Pakistan, but it could be Europe. Which each side detonates 50, 15 kiloton weapons. Immediate result of 100 nuclear weapons, roughly the size of those dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, being detonated would release, would be the release of 5 megatons of black carbon into the atmosphere. Black carbon, not too dissimilar to suit, so it would lock out some and can also be fatal to humans. Following a spell of black carbon rain and deadly weather front would, des would devastate what remained of humanity following nuclear war. Temperature of the earth would be begin to drop. After about a year, it would fall by one degree Celsius, which is 2 degrees Fahrenheit, well after 5 it would be 1.5 degrees Celsius, or 3 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than it is now. About 20 years after the conflict it would warm again to just 0.5 C, or 1 degree Fahrenheit, below today's temperatures. Well, it's rather odd that they uh, said uh, India and Pakistan is there hasn't many problems in that area of the world for a while. So I'm thinking they're looking at Russia and Britain and France and speculating that maybe something is going to happen in that area. Russia 
In the land news, Russia challenges accusations that Ukraine rebels shot down the airliner. Well, then who did? Did you uh, do it, Russians? They're saying that terrorists shot it down. They're actually trying to blame it on the Ukrainian Air Force. Russian airspace control systems detected Ukrainian Air Force plane, presumably an Su-25 fighter jet, scrambling in the direction of Malaysia, Boeing. The distance of Su-25 Su plane from Boeing was three to five kilometers to three miles. Air Force Lieutenant General Igor Makushev said. So they're trying to blame it on Ukraine is what it amounts to. Now yeah, this is horse fathers because we know what it was shot down by. Unbelievable. Well, we'll take a look and see what else there is. From the uh, InfoWars.com, New World Disorder, merging division between East and West, threatens to plunge the globe into chaos. Yeah, we've just been over that with the nuclear war story. We have uh, China and Russia. And that whole thing, and we're facing off of them. I did a story earlier that China is racing to build its uh, fleet of attack submarines. So, it's part for the car, it's worlds falling apart. And now, just so you have a story that is not negative, um, scientists have uh, moved one closer to having a Star Trek style holodeck. Well, not exactly, but it's uh, fairly close. I'll explain here. Uh, how that becomes a reality Star Trek style system uses a wireless Oculus Rift to visit virtual worlds. Basically, you put this headset on, and you choose where you want to visit Hong Kong, Paris. London, Tokyo, whatever, whatever, wherever, and you can walk around the room with this thing on, and it feels it feels like you're in the place where uh, you want to go. I'd like to try this thing out myself, to be honest with you. It's, looks like kind of fun. I mean, it's much, it would be more interesting than Second Life on with a flat screen. So, I wouldn't mind trying that out for myself. It's, uh, a lot of applications eventually. It's not the same thing as having the Star Trek one, really, because in the Star Trek thing, materialized these solid figures on thin air, but that's a whole other discussion. We're getting there. This is Artifacts of Mars. Thank you for listening to Tyranny Watch News. Um,
Hopefully we'll do something again tomorrow, and hopefully the world will still be intact tomorrow.